everyone, it's Hannah from Daisy Farm Crafts and in this video I wanted to show you how I made these textured hot pads using these really pretty fall colors in Bernat Softy Cotton. And I wanted to experiment with a couple different textures. So the more orange colored one is um, a combination of treble crochet and single crochet. Uh, the navy colored hot pad is um, the berry stitch and single crochet. And then the teal hot pad is a double crochet bobble and single crochet. And um, so the pattern for all of them is exactly the same, the counting. I just kind of mixed up the textured stitch. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you in this video, um, as well as the ribbed border on the outside of them. So I just needed one skein of yarn for each hot pad and I am using a size H 5 millimeter crochet hook. Alright, so to get started, for each of the hot pads I made a base chain of 22. And then I started in the second chain from the hook and for the first row I just worked a single crochet into each stitch or into each chain sorry so a single crochet means that you just insert your hook and then yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over pull through both loops so you just want to work one single crochet into each chain. And when you get to the end of the chain, since we started with a base chain of 22, uh, you should have 21 stitches total and then when you get to the end you just want to chain one and turn and now we're going to start our first textured row so you just want to work one single crochet into that first stitch and then in the next stitch I'm going to work a double crochet four together bobble and to do that, I'm going to start by yarning over and inserting my hook, then yarning over and pulling up a loop, yarning over, pull through two loops. And then I'm going to yarn over again, insert my hook into the same space, yarn over and pull up a loop again, yarn over pull through two loops and then I'm going to do it for a third time again working into that same space and then a fourth time yarn over insert my hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and at this point I should have five loops on my hook yarn over pull through all five loops. Then you're just going to work a single crochet into the next stitch and you're just going to alternate the bobble stitch and single crochet all the way across the row.
So you should end the row with a single crochet. So you're just going to chain one and turn again. And since the bobbles are always going to just be facing on one side, um, after every bobble row or texture row, you're always going to just work one row of single crochet. So now you're just going to work a single crochet into each stitch across the row. And that is really all you need to know to make one hot pad um, because you're just going to alternate the row of bobbles with a row of single crochet and you're always going to have a single crochet in between each bobble. So you should always start and end a row with a single crochet and have a single crochet in between each bobble. And here you can see in my finished hot pad, I worked until I had um, kind of a 10 by 10. So you want to have 10 bobbles going across and then 10 bobbles going up. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to do the berry stitch version. So I already chained 22 and worked my first row of single crochet. So I just worked my first single crochet stitch and now I'm going to work a berry. And so I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through one loop. Then yarn over, insert my hook into the same space, and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all the loops on my hook. And then again, I'm just going to work a single crochet, and I'm going to alternate the berry stitch and single crochet all the way across the row. So here's what it looks like on the other side after I finish my berry row. And again, I'm just going to work a row of single crochet because um, I always want my um, textures to be popping out on the same side. So just work one row of single crochet and you'll just do exactly the same as the bobble version where you're just working a row of single crochet in between each bobble row and a single crochet in between each bobble. And here's what the finished version of this one looks like. And I just did the same thing. You kind of do 10 berries by 10 berries. All right, so the last version I wanna show you is the alternating single crochet and treble crochet. So, um, I worked this in the exact same way. I started with a base chain of 22, and then I alternated a row of single crochet in between each texture row. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how to how I work the stitch. So again, always start with a single crochet in that first stitch, and then a treble crochet. Oh, let me grab some yarn here. A treble crochet um, means you yarn over twice. So kind of wrap the yarn twice around your hook. Then insert your hook. Yarn and pull up a loop. Then yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And yarn over, pull through two loops. So then work a single crochet 
and then another treble crochet. So it's a lot like a double crochet, you're just yarning over an extra time at the beginning so that it gives you some extra loops to go through at the end. So yarn over twice, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And again, you'll just alternate this stitch with single crochet all the way across the row. And then after you do this row of the treble crochets, you'll just do one row of single crochet. All right, so I'm almost done with this square. I've worked until I have like 10 treble crochets high. So I'm just on my last row of single crochet. So to finish this square off, um, I am going to make sure that I have 10. And then I'm going to tie off. So you're going to want to make two of these squares and you're going to make them exactly the same. So, you know, start with the base chain of 22 and make them the exact same width and height. And then you're going to put them together um, with the textured sides facing outward. And um, it's up to you if you want to weave in those ends with a tapestry needle. Um, it was easier for me to just kind of hide them inside the hot pad. Uh, it saves me a little bit of time, but you can totally um, weave them in or you can just hide them. Either way works. So I'm going to start in the top left hand corner and insert my hook through both squares. Then I'm going to pull up a loop and chain three. And again, I'm just going to kind of hide my tail in the middle of the hot pad just to save some time. So now I'm just going to work double crochet around the outside of the hot pads. So I'm going to start kind of inserting my hook into that same corner and just work a double crochet. And my goal is to work 21 stitches on each of the sides and then three stitches into each corner. So, and you want to just kind of line them up as best you can and always make sure you're inserting your hook through both squares. And again, to work a double crochet, you just want to yarn over, insert your hook, then yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So, and you want to, again, try to have 21 double crochets along the side. And when you get to the corner, you're just going to work three double crochets all into the same corner space. So I just had my 21 stitches. So now I'm going to work three double crochets. Again, making sure that I'm going through both squares. And then I'm just going to keep moving in the same direction around the hot pad and try to get 21 stitches along this side as well.
All right, so I worked double crochet all around the edge of my hot pad. So when I get back to the starting corner, I like to just work three double crochets underneath that starting chain. So one, two, three. And then I'm gonna keep going in the same direction, but now I'm gonna start alternating front and back post double crochet. So a front post means you insert your hook behind the post on the front side of your work. So just insert your hook behind the post and work a double crochet as you normally would. And then a back post double crochet means you yarn over, insert your hook behind the post again, but you're gonna do it on the back side of your work. Then yarn over, pull it behind that post, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you're still working a double crochet, you're just working them around the posts. And you're just gonna alternate the front side and the back side so that they keep popping out in alternating directions. And when you get to each of the corners on this round, you're gonna keep doing the alternating pattern. So I just worked a front post, so now I'm gonna do a back post double crochet. But I still want to increase my corners, so I'm gonna work three alternating post double crochets around the middle stitch of the three that I worked on the previous round. So. I'm supposed to be working a front post double crochet according to the pattern. So I'm gonna work a front post and then I'm gonna now work a back post double crochet around that same post. So it's kind of hard to find. Dig your hook in there a little bit. So there's a back post, so that's two. And then you're gonna do one more front post double crochet, again, around that same middle post. So you're just working three alternating front or back post double crochets, but you're working them all around that center post. And then depending on Whichever stitch you ended with, you just continue the alternating pattern going in the same direction. And then you'll do the same thing on each of the corners around the hot pad. So here I am back at the starting corner again. So I've done one round of front and po back post double crochet. So now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work my corners the same way in the starting corner. So work three alternating post double crochets all around that center post. So back, front, and now one more back. And then I'm just gonna keep going in the same direction. And it looks like I'm gonna have two front posts in a row, um, which is fine, sometimes that just happens with the counting. So on this round, you just wanna make sure that you keep um, your posts facing the same direction as the previous row. So I'm gonna do a front post to match that one and then a back post to match the next one. And just continue on the same way all around the hot pad.
All right, and for this round, you're still gonna work the corners the same way. Just find that middle post and you're gonna work three alternating front and back post double crochets around that middle post. So here I am at the end of my second round, back to the starting corner. I'm finishing up my last post double crochet. So I like to just finish off the corner by working the three alternating in around the middle post again. So do a front post and then a back post around that same post. And then a front post double crochet around that same middle post. And then just finish off that last stitch of the corner. And then just slip stitch into the next stitch and tie off. And then you can just use a big tapestry needle to weave in that end just kind of work back and forth in the stitches to hide that tail And then once you feel like it's secure, cut it off and you are done. So thank you so much for coming to watch this video. Hopefully this helps explain how I made these fun textured hot pads. As usual, the full written pattern is on our website, daisyfarmcrafts.com. And um, as always, if you make any of our projects, please come share a picture with us on Facebook or Instagram using hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts. We would love to see what you're making. So thanks so much. Have a great day.